We have a lot to do today, so let's get this party started. Hey everyone, Kristen Somm here and we are jamming through Sweet as Pie. So yesterday we did the pumpkin and the pecan blocks. So today we are going to do two more blocks and we are going to do the cherry pie and the blueberry pie. I'm most looking forward to the blueberry pie. I think that'll be super cute. So yeah, both of them are really, really cute. Anyway, so let's go ahead and talk about what we are going to need for these um, I'm going to bring you over the computer after we're done and merge them if you choose you're welcome to do that I'm going to use my big 9x14 hoop um, but you can do these in smaller hoops definitely without a doubt so let's talk about um, cherry pie first so for the cherry pie we are going to do this in two hooping. So um, I'm going to do all of the lattice in one hooping and then both of the pies in another hooping. And either way, even if you um, do individuals, you'll need to do part A and part B. And there's actually two steps to part A. So anyway, let's just talk about the products for now. So the very first part is going to be the lattice work. You need to have that before you do the pie. So we will start with our felt. So we are going to have two pieces of felt for our lattice work. And we're gonna start with these at five and a half by five, sorry, five by six and a half. Five by six and a half for the felt and it is graham cracker embroidery felt. There are three pieces of felt in our packet, um, but two of them are that are five by six and a half. Those are the ones that we need for lattice, okay? So five by six and a half, two pieces for our lattice. That will be the first part. And then when we're done with that and we have the lattice pieces ready, we're gonna work on the cherry block. For the cherry block, we are going to start with our main fabric, which is this cream colored with a bunch of lines all over it, um, and back it with fusible stabilizer. It's a big piece of fabric. We're gonna start with this at eight and a half by eight and a half for our main fabric for the cherry block. All right. And then we are going to use um, the filling. So I told you in the prepping, the fabric prepping video that I changed mine up a little bit, but what comes in our fabric kit is this super cute cherry fabric from Maywood and that we are going to use at five by five and we're gonna add the iron on vinyl to this and I'll show you in photos exactly how to do that to prepare your fabric. It's very simple. We actually did it on our Razzleberry slice of pie. So same thing, but notice I haven't done that to mine because I decided on a different fabric. I told you at the very beginning, I'm gonna change mine up just a little bit and you always Always have that option to personalize yours. So what I decided on is cherry fabric and I already have my iron-on vinyl. I started it out that way and I just keep it in my packet this way. Um, but it already has the iron-on vinyl and it's cherries. How cute is that? I thought that would be really fun. I happen to already have that and I thought, oh gee, I have to use this. So that's what I'll be using. So whichever fabric you choose for your filling, you want to add on that iron on vinyl. And like I said, I will show in photos how to do that very, very simply. Um, and we are going to use uh, a piece of fabric that is five by five, five by five for your filling fabric. And like I said, the original one is this really cute cherry fabric, okay? And then we are going to use um, the felt for the graham cracker crust. So like I said, we have those other two pieces for the lattice, but this one is actually five and a half by five and a half, five and a half by five and a half. And it's that same graham cracker felt, um, but it is a little bit smaller than the other one. So that then you know that this one is for the base. All right, let me just check that. Um, five and a half by five and a half and it is the crest base all right and then we are going to quilt it so whenever we quilt we use our batting and our final cut size of this is six and a half by six and a half so that means we want a piece of batting that is seven by seven all right seven by seven for your batting and then for our quilting we are going to use um, fruit two that's the one with all the little i think there was cherries and stuff on it 
Yep. Very cute. Looks like berries and things. Anyway, uh, we are going to use fruit two in size six by six for our quilting on this. And we are also going to use wash away topping for that lattice part. So make sure you've got your wash away um, topping and, and actually wash away stabilizer, my mistake. So I showed it in the prep video. The wash away stabilizer is the weave one. It's thicker. It's for in the hoop. And then the topping is thinner and we tear that away when we're done. It's to keep um, our stitches from sinking in and also from our foot getting caught. That's the big one from getting our, our foot caught on our lattice work. All right, so have those ready um, and, and I will show you um, in pictures what um, I'm using in my hoop and what, what we're putting on the top and all of that. All right, so um, don't forget your iron-on fabric for your filling and we're going to do cherry. That's the cherry and like I said, it's done in a couple of parts, so we'll go over all of that and, um, and then we'll talk about the next one. All right, so you can do the cherry block and then do the blueberry block, or you can do like I'm gonna do and merge them together. So now let's talk about the blueberry pie block. It's actually just called blueberry. All right, so the first thing, just like the other, we are gonna start by making our lattice. This one is a little bit lighter. This one's called shortbread. This is the shortbread embroidery felt, and we're gonna have two pieces for our lattice, and this is gonna be, let's see, five by six and a half, just like the other one. So five by six and a half, two pieces of the shortbread embroidery felt, and that's for the lattice work. And then after we have that all done and ready, we are gonna start on the actual blueberry pie block. So this one, we are going to use this tan colored orange peel fabric, and it is a large piece of fabric at eight and a half by eight and a half. So make sure to back this with fusible stabilizer. All right, so the tan lattice, lattice orange peel, I'm not sure which it's called, but it looks both to me. Anyway, eight and a half by eight and a half for our main fabric of the blueberry pie. All right, and then for our filling. So the filling, it comes in our fabric kit. We have this bright blue, really pretty marlin blue, um, silky solid in the fabric kit. And we're going to use that at, where is it? Five by four and a half. So we are going to use the iron on vinyl on this. You can see I didn't because I chose a different fabric, like I mentioned in the prepping video. But this is the one that will come with it if you choose to use all the same fabrics that came in your fabric kit. It. This is the one that you would use and you would add the iron on vinyl to that and like I said I'll add that in photos to show you how to do that. It's very 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 simple So I actually already put my iron on vinyl on my fabric and I chose a blueberry fabric because I happen to have it available and I thought why not right so that that's fine so whichever one that you use you want to make sure to add your iron on vinyl and you want the size to be five by four and a half for your filling fabric all right and then we have our base crest so for the base crest it's that same shortbread um, embroidery felt and this one we're gonna have at five and a half by five so it's a little different size than the two that are for the lattice so that's how you know which ones for the base and which ones are for the lattice so this is five and a half by five and just one piece of this and it's the shortbread embroidery felt for the crest and then this one has that really fun silver leather um, this will be for that pie tin. I think that's so cute. Super fun. So on this embroidery leather, it comes in the embellishment kit and we are going to use it at four and a half by three and a half, four and a half by three and a half. So this way, um, for the silver embroidery leather and don't back this with anything, leave it as is. All right. And then we are going to quilt it. So whenever we quilt, we use our batting and our final cut size is six and a half by six and a half. So we want a piece of batting that is seven by seven, seven by seven for your batting. All right. And if you're in the Christian Creates group, I added a whole, um, a picture that I made and a file basically of all the different batting sizes for all of the blocks. If you wanted to prepare all of those ahead of time, you have that option. I added that in the group and the Christian Creates group on Facebook. So for the blueberry block, we are going to quilt it. Don't forget that this will be done in two parts. So part A is that lattice work, part B will have the quilting and the pie. 
And for the quilting, we're going to use fruit too. So we're using fruit too on both of them, um, but different colors probably. So anyway, I'm thinking ahead of what we need to merge. <laughs> so uh, fruit two in six by six for our quilting design today. All right, so now that we have all of our fabric pieces figured out, um, I'm gonna bring you over to the computer to quickly show you how to merge. We need to do two of them because we need to do the lattice work and then we need to do the pie blocks. And again, you can do those absolutely separately. It's totally up to you. Um, you can use a five by seven hoop for the lattice work and for the pie, but um, I'm gonna make a little short video, probably even before this one, talking about the quilting design. If you're using a five by seven hoop and we're using a six by six quilting design, you would need to double hoop. So that means you would use a four by six quilting design and a two by six quilting design. And that will work super easily and I'll show that in a separate video. Hey everyone, so I did this tutorial already and then I realized that the cherry pie and the blueberry pie have different thread colors, um, so we can't actually join them all. So I'm going to do this again. You didn't uh, edit out that other one, but anyway, I'm going to open up in Brilliance Essentials and I'm currently on my 5x7 hoop, so I'm going to go up here to Preferences and choose my 9x14 hoop. And I'm going to click this compass button and click H for hoop so that I can see my entire hoop. All right, and then go to merge stitch file. All right, and then we're going to bring in the lattice um, parts. So here's lattice part one and lattice part two. We need both of these. So I'm gonna click on part one. It will go to the center. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go ahead and take it and move it up here to the corner. I click on the stitching to move it up to the corner. I'm going to move it over just a bit. It looks a little too close to that hoop. Okay, and then um, merge stitch file to bring in the second one. And lattice part two right there. Double click on that and bring it up to this right hand corner. <clears throat> okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and bring in the next two uh, merge stitch file. We just need two more of those, but we're going to have to change them a little bit so that they don't actually group. Um, well, I'll, I'll show you. So part one, bring that in, bring it down to the bottom. Actually, we could just copy and paste. That's easier, quicker than finding them. Control C, Control V, goes right over the top and bring it down here. Okay, so then we have all four. Um, but we want these two to be different on this last step um, than these two because they're going to be different. So all the default one blues and default two oranges, we can keep those and we can join those. That's not a problem. But for these first two, we want the same color. And then the second two, we want a different color. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this default 11 brown. This I'm in the first one. You can see it's highlighted over here on the left. Click on the color and the first color that comes up for me is bronze so I'm just going to click on that and say okay and then for this number two that that's um, part one and part two part one is over here this is part two so I want that to join I want the same color so I'm going to use that bronze again and say okay all right and then on this one down here, these two, we want to be a different color. Um, we just want it to stop long enough for us to change the thread color. So on this 3-3 three, three here, I'm going to click on the color and I'm going to click on the next color, which is biscotti, and say OK. Again, it doesn't matter what color we use. It's not going to change the color on our machine or anything. It just puts in a stop so that we can change the color when we get to it. And then I want these two to join, this one and this one. So I'm gonna click on this default 11 brown, click on the color, and I used biscotti, so I'm gonna use biscotti again. All right, so then we have the top two and the bottom two, and there we'll, we'll join everything except for that last step. And so let's see how that runs. So we're gonna go to utility color sort, and it reduces it by eight. So we're on 12 right now. So let's see, new view and open up this to run through it. So there's the placement stitch for the batting, or I'm sorry, the placement stitch for the felt. 
on all of the lattice strips and those are joined so that's perfect and then the tack down of the felt that's perfect and then the first two and the second two so that's exactly right that's how we want it before when I did it earlier I had all four joined and that makes it so that we I'd have to hit the stop button and pay attention in the whole bit to be able to change the color because these two are with a different color of felt these two are with a different color of felt so we want to have a different color for the thread so I'm going to go to um, file save as file save stitch file as and I'm going to name it um, Let's see, did I already make one? There it is, lattice strips one, two. So I'm just gonna save over the one I did originally and say save. So you can do wanna replace it. And then I'm going to go to utility, send to Solaris and say, okay. file sent to machine. All right, so quick and easy. Um, so this just makes it so that we can get all four in one hooping. Um, this top two will be for the cherry pie. The bottom two will be for the blueberry pie. And we need to make these before we make that cherry and blueberry pie. All right, let's get stitching. Hi everyone, I'm at my computer now. So I am going to open up Embrilliance Essentials embroidery software just to show you how to fit everything in the hoop if you choose to join them. So I'm gonna go, I'm right here in my nine by 14 hoop. It says it down here at the bottom and that's what I wanna be on, so that's perfect. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click this H button just to make sure it's zoomed into the hoop and it is. And we're going to join in the actual cherry pie and the blueberry pie and the quilting designs. I didn't bring over my little folder, but I believe it was fruit two and six by six for both of them. So I'm going to go to merge stitch file. And here's my quilting bundle. Open that and fruit two. Embroidery files block by block is the technique we are using and I use Pez for my machine and we're looking for a six by six Right there six by six double click on that and it goes to the center and then we can go ahead and bring in the pie so that it will be centered we I showed you a couple of techniques in the last couple of days on how to do that so um, I'm going to go ahead and, and bring in the first pie. I believe the first one is the cherry, right? Yeah, 
Okay, sorry, I had to look at my folder back there. All right, so um, here I'm going to close the quilting bundle and go to the bench pillow embroidery files. Pez is what I use for my machine, and we're looking for the cherry pie. There's the blueberry, and there's the cherry. Double click on that, and it goes right to the center, and then we can click and drag like I showed you yesterday to make sure that we have the quilting and the design. We want to make sure to have both and then click anywhere on the stitching and bring it up. And as I mentioned yesterday, you could use your um, the arrow keys on your keyboard to move it up if you like that better than using your mouse. Either one will work just fine. All right, so now since we have the same quilting design on these, I'm going to go ahead and change these colors and then I can just do a copy and paste instead of um, having to do that again. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'll click on the first color and the first one that it comes up is dark aqua and then orange will be blaze and then the second blue, I believe it's marine, yep marine and then click on orange and it will be Oriole. And then I'm going to change, I'm going to have um, a stop between these because I don't recall what colors they are. Let me just grab the folder. Okay, sorry about that. Oops, that's not them. <laughs> okay, sorry, unprepared. All right, so one is a darker brown and one is like a linen color. So I am gonna keep my thread colors for the quilting separate. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that, click on the color, and I'm gonna pick the first one, which is Sprout, and say okay. All right, so I can close that. Now this, sorry, I'm moving my chair around. Now this is all done, and we know that we want another one, not of the cherry, but just of the quilting. So this whole number one step, I'm gonna hit Control C and Control V and see it made another one. It'll go right on top of it, so I can click on the stitching and I can move this down here. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna move this to the center. I'm gonna use these little black squares and I'm gonna bring this exactly to the center so that I can center my my pie, the blueberry pie. All right, so see these black squares help me to center this just right. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the blueberry pie now. All right, right there. This is gonna be the cutest one, I'm sure of it. All right, double click on the blueberry pie and it goes to the center. And then we are going to, I'm gonna close this up just so I can drag easily. I'm gonna click on step three and four together and move it down to the bottom so that I have a lot of room for the fabric. Okay, so those are, are done. To be able to join them, we don't wanna join all the steps of the cherry and the blueberry though. We just wanna join the quilting designs. So what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna do it like we did yesterday. That was really easy. I'm gonna go ahead and um, Copy these and say Control C, and then I'm going to open a new tab, File, New Page, and I'm going to hit Control V, and then everything is there. We've got the first quilting, the cherry pie, the second quilting, and the blueberry pie. And then I'm going to go to this next tab, this first tab, which is Untitled 3, and I'm going to go ahead and, <coughs> excuse me, Delete just the pie. So this cherry pie, delete. Blueberry pie, delete. I'm just hitting delete on my keyboard. And then I can go ahead and join these. So there's now step one and step two are both the quilting designs. Just to confirm. Okay, and then utility color sort. All right, and it reduced it by five. I'm gonna click new view. And open that up and just run through real quick. Placement for the batting, tack down of the batting, placement of the main fabric, tack down of the main fabric, and then the two quilting designs. So I forgot, I didn't want, I don't want these to be the same. So we made a mistake. This is a good opportunity to show you 
um, I am going to just delete this tab. I'm going to say, nope, that's not what I wanted to happen, my mistake. So I'm going to click on, on this to, to delete it. Save changes? No, because I made a mistake. All right, so I am on this first tab that just has the quilting, Untitled 3, and then on this second one, the second quilting, I don't want Sprout I because we did a copy and paste, but I forgot that I want to change the quilting color so that I have a moment to change the thread. So I'm going to click on Sprout and click the next color, which is sea green, and say OK. All right, so now we have both of the Fruit 2 quilting designs, but one of them does not have, or both the quilting design, the last step, number five, is different on each of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to Utility Color Sort, and it reduced it by four. I'm gonna say New View, and then just take a look at it again. So placement for the batting, tack down for the batting, placement for the main fabric, tack down for the main fabric, and then the first quilting design and the second quilting design. So those are perfect. So now I'm going to go to that middle tab. This is that one that we did the copy and paste to have the designs. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to delete the quilting because we already have quilting on our other tab and they're already joined like we want them to be. So I'm gonna click on this first step of quilting and click delete and then this next step of quilting, the fruit two and click delete. So then I have just the pies. I'm going to go ahead and um, drag up so that I have both of them. And I'm going to say control C and I'm going to bring them over to this untitled six. And I'm going to click control V to paste them. And you can see they go right to the center uh, because they stayed from before. And they're, <coughs> excuse me, and they're not joined. So we have the cherry pie and the blueberry pie, nothing's joined. We'll be able to do those separately, but we have the quilting design for both of them already joined and already. So this is perfect, exactly how I envisioned it. So I'm gonna to go to File, Save, Stitch File As, and I'm going to name this cherry and blueberry, blueberry pie. Pies, <laughs> cherry and blueberry pies. Click save. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and send this to my machine. If you don't have a machine that has Wi-Fi like this, um, then you would just save it to a USB stick and bring your USB stick over to your machine. All right, so that was extremely easy and will save us some time. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's go ahead and get started stitching.
Okay, so one more block for today. We can do one more, right? So the six square block is actually a very simple block and I, we only have a couple of pieces for it. We will need our clear blue tiles. If you have clear blue tiles, we will need that to um, do the bitty blocks, which are the cute little two by two. Um, yep, that one, two by two for the quilting. Um, but if not, I'm gonna show you another way. So if you have embroidery software, then there's actually a fun way I came up with how to get all those little bitty blocks on there. So we'll go over that, um, but real quick, let's go over the products needed. And it's just two, there's two simple pieces, the orange stars and the, um, it's kind of like, I don't know how to describe this one, basically like little arrows. Um, hopefully you can see that. <laughs> Cream colored with little arrows um, and the orange with stars. And both of these are going to be eight by two and a half. I did back mine with fusible stabilizer. I find that a lot easier for cutting and for trimming and for lining them up and um, sewing them together. I, without puckering, I think it looks really good. So that's what what I do. So eight by two and a half for your two pieces. And I will go over in photos um, how to get this all together. And then we will quilt it for our um, batting. Uh, it looks like our batting is going to be five by seven because our final cut size is four and a half by six and a half. So we want a piece of batting that is five by seven. So if you're using the clear blue tiles, you would basically just have an inch extra of um, batting all the way around, extra batting. I'm gonna do it in the hoop, that's why I'm doing five by seven. But actually that five by seven would probably still work about, I'm not really sure. Um, once we get this all sewn together, then we'll know better. But you would just do the batting and then lay down your main uh, fabric, which would be all pieced together, and then you use your clear blue tiles to write on them. We'll go over some more of it in, in photos, but, um, but I'm going to show you another way as well. All right, can I get one more out of you? So um, I found a really interesting way to do this six square block. And if you have the clear blue tiles, you can absolutely use the clear blue tiles version. I will show that, or I have shown that. Um, and now I'm just gonna show you, if you have embroidery software, another option of how to do it. So I'm opening up Embrilliance Essentials. It opens to my last hoop that I use, which is nine by 14. You can see down here, I'm going to go ahead and change the hoop size. We don't need a big old hoop for this little six square block. So I'm going to go to the preferences folder and I am going to find my five by seven hoop and say, okay. Then I'm going to go up to this compass button and click H and it zooms into that, just that hoop. All right. So this, like I said, is, is a little different way of doing it, but I thought it was pretty cool. So I'm going to go to merge stitch file. Okay, so I'm going to open up the Sweetest Pie Quilting Bundle. And the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to pick any quilting design. It actually doesn't matter. I'm going to use the um, Fruit 2 and Pez for my machine. And then I'm going to open up a 4x6 design. All right, right there. Now you can do this and be done. You can do this on all of that um, six square block if you want, or you can have a little bit more fun with it. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to bring in the bitty blocks and how to make it pretty cute um, in a different way. So just a different way of doing it. So we have the placement stitch 
for our batting and the tack down stitch of our batting and we want those right that'll make it easier once we've got our um, six square block all sewn together and then the placement for the main fabric which will be that six square block and the tack down so this one the quilting design I'm going to delete this like I said you can leave this and you can do this on your whole block and be done um, very simple but I'm going to do a little something different and it's it's in the directions too I'm just showing you a different way of doing it so on this turquoise I'm going to click the delete button on my keyboard and I'm just going to utilize the um, steps for the placement and tack down of the batting and the main fabric all right so I'm going to leave this and now I'm going to bring in let's see I'm going to start on number three actually so number three is supposed to be a two by two of that fruit too so i'm going to go to merge stitch file and we're already in fruit two and pez is what i use for my machine and then a two by two so right there two by two of fruit two double click on that it goes to the center and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to move this over to the very center and I am going to overlap it. Do you see what I'm doing here? So I overlapped it um, with that batting line. Okay, so the batting line of this first block with the batting line of this four by six block. I, I brought it right over to that center. And that's easy to do by just using the black squares to make sure that it's on the center. All right, super easy. And now we have our number three block set. So we're not going to need the placement and the tack down stitches, but I used them to be able to get the block aligned. So once we have the block aligned, we can go ahead and delete these. So I'm going to go ahead, <coughs> excuse me, um, I'm going to keep the first one just to utilize it for um, lining up the others. We'll delete all of the rest of them later. But I, So leave this to one, just leave that one, and then go ahead and delete two two and then another two two and the last two two all right so then we have the quilting design and we have the placement of the batting which we're not going to need that but we're going to use it to be able to line all the rest of the blocks up all right so that's the first one so number four is bitty block pie one so i'm going to go to merge stitch file and i'm going to open up the bitty blocks let's see Bitty blocks right there, the last folder in that um, quilting bundle. So embroidery files, block by block, Pez is what I use, and we're looking for Pi 1. Right there, Pi 1. Double click on that and it goes to the center. Now again, I am going to take this by clicking on the stitching and I'm going to move it over and I'm going to line it up with that um, the placement for the batting right there line that up and then line it also up with the center right here and right here you can see from the black squares all right so that one you can see it's lined up perfectly I'm gonna go ahead and leave that first one like we did before and then I'm gonna delete two three and four which becomes two two three times <laughs> does that make sense am I confusing you See, it's three, two. We don't need these three, two, three, three, and three, four. So I'm just going to delete those. You can probably do them all at once. Look at that. You can. Three, two, three, three, and three, four. I'm going to click delete. And then we just have the um, placement for the batting and the quilting design. Perfect. And look at, you can see how perfectly that's lined up. All right. So then we're going to go to number one, which is, let's see. Um, Bitty block pie three. So I'm going to go to merge stitch file and I'm back at those bitty blocks. And I'm, I should already have that open. Let's see. Bitty block, embroidery files, pets. So click on that. All right. And then bitty block pie three right there. Double click on that, it goes to the center, and this will be number one. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the stitching, which gets convoluted. You don't want to move other things, so you could just click on this part of the stitching. Actually, I'm going to click on this part of the stitching, yeah, because then I can line it up with the placement of the batting line. All right. 
tiny, tiny bit. There we go. Okay. Now again, I'm going to leave this first block for now, and then I'm going to delete two, three, and four. All right, right here. Delete on my keyboard. Look at that. Isn't that cool? All right, so since we've already got that bitty block folder open, I'm going to see we need piece five. So I'm going to go ahead and find merge stitch file and Pez for my machine. And we are using Pi 4, this one. And that will go in place five which is down on the bottom left. So again, I'm going to click on the stitching and I'm going to click on the batting line stitching just because it kind of makes it easier to move it around and not grab something else in the, in the meantime. All right, and then line it up with the batting line on the four by six, you can see that. And then we're going to go ahead and leave number one and we're going to click on two, three, and four and click delete. All right, now if you see that anything is off, you can certainly move it at this point. Mine, mine are, are right on. This is pretty good. <clears throat> All right, so then for, let's see, it's two, three, and six. So this is three. So we need this one two more times. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this one, and then I'm going to hit Control-C and Control-V to paste it right on top. And then I'm going to click on the stitching. Oops, see, that's why. Um, so this is the undo button right here. I'm going to undo so that I don't move that where it shouldn't be. And I'm going to go ahead and click just on this stitching. And then I'm going to move it up here to the upper right corner. Good. And then I'm going to say control V again to get one more of these. And it's going to go down in this bottom corner. And I'm just lining up with that the um, lines there. All right. Look at that. Very nice. <clears throat> All right. So how easy was that? That's like super cool. I'm pretty happy about that. All right. Now what we're going to do, since we've already done our placement of our um, batting, which we're going to do it on this four by six one up here. So we're going to go ahead and delete all of those placement stitches for the batting around each of these blocks. We don't need that. We don't want that. It'll be in the way and it'll show. So we're just going to click on default one blue and click delete on each of these. So see, you open up the bitty block folder right here where it's got the plus sign and then find the default one blue, which is that placement of the uh, batting, which we don't need because we've already got it. We're going to click delete. <coughs> Excuse me. Number four, click on default one blue, click delete, and default one blue, click delete, and path six, default one blue, delete, and number seven, default one blue, delete. All right, so look at that. Isn't that so cool? Now, I'm going to change the colors, I think. Let me think. Nope, we're going to use the same quilting color on each of these, so we don't need to. Um, so these will all merge and, and, and join together at the same time. Let's see what we have. So we have turquoise for all of these, and then we have blue and orange. So these we do want to change the color. Um, otherwise, let me think. So if we don't do a color sort, we don't need to do a color sort actually, because these are these will automatically do all of them, I believe. I don't think we'll have to hit stop. I'm curious about that. Um, so there really isn't a reason to do a color sort because we only have one of everything. Um, the only reason I would want to do a color sort is so that we're not pushing the start button on each of these um, colors, but I don't think it's going to. I think it will automatically do them. I, I'm not absolutely sure. So I'm going to leave this and this will be a learning process and see if it automatically does each of these. That would be interesting. I think it will, but I'm not sure. All right, so I'm not going to do a color sort. I'm just going to do a file, save stitch file as. And I'm going to name this um, six square biddies, biddy blocks. 
Maybe I'll change it to say Biddy Blocks. Biddy Blocks. Six square Biddy Blocks. Save. All right, and then I'm going to send this to my machine. And it's there. All right, so that was just so easy and such a fun way to try something different. Um, and how cute is that? So like I said, you can absolutely use your clear blue tiles. Sorry, that should have probably closed my window blinds. It looks like you're seeing me dark. But anyway, um, you can use your clear blue tiles for this or you can use your embroidery software and super easy. That's all ready to go. So let's get stitching. Mm -hmm.